Hello everyone, uh, I'm about to go into the gym and so I decided to just quickly uh, do this video and it's to say it's in the last few days there have been a lot of articles whatever written about uh, Remy Tinubu over her, uh, her husband and it, of course the different statements that she has been making stuff like that one of them i just threw some of that that no food for lazy man uh, uh that, that her husband is not greedy and it's also not the cause of nigeria's problem for me usually you know this thing that they call first lady wife of whatever whether it's husband of i really don't have time for those people because first of all nobody voted for you second of all you are not anywhere in the constitution so i don't even i don't even bother about them you know when people hold them accountable whatever i mean i believe as a private individual you have a right to do whatever it is that you're doing the way you want to do it and just be your thing and whatever but in the case of Remy Tinibu, I think she's overstepping her boundaries and just running her mouth all over the place. And, you know, the, the, the whole issue of trying to insult our sensibilities is one thing that I just don't understand. Okay, so no food for lazy youth, but there's food for criminals, right? There's food for those who we subvert the system. For do, there's food for those who are criminal. There's food for those, for those who we fought certificate. There's food for those who we rig election. But it's, it's, it's when it comes to the youth that they are telling us that they are, there's no food for lazy people. Nigerian youth are not lazy people. The last time that someone came out to call the Nigerian youth lazy, we saw that was uh, our former president, Muhammad Buhari. And I remember doing an interview and saying that it's it's rather him that it's lazy and not the Nigerian youth. And he did that abroad. And I did talk of the fact that this, the, Buhari had one very character of going abroad and the marketing, you know, ni ni Nigeria. And so uh, for me, it's really the fact that... Uh, these people come again and again and again and insult Nigerians, insult the sensibilities of Nigerians. Nigerians, Nigerian youth are not looking for anybody to spoon feed them. Not, neither are they looking for anybody to give them handouts. What they simply say is ensure there's enabling environment for them to work. Even if you cannot improve the enable, enabling environment, even if you can't add to it, don't destroy it for that. Don't spoil it. Don't turn it into, you know, uh, something else, just like the way uh, we've seen that has been done uh, all, all, all this while. Let's even look at Buhari. As bad as Buhari's government was, I mean, the most the worst that we had seen at the time that Buhari was still uh, in office. Nobody expected that it should go this bad. Well, of course, you know, if you put in the wrong person, like I, I told people, a lot of people, even before the election, like, we thought Jonathan was the worst, you understand, as of that time. And then Buhari came and made Jonathan a saint. Just like now you have Tinibu is coming out to make uh, uh, Buhari look like, like a saint, that things can actually worsen. So what the Nigerian youth are even saying now is the fact that could you have left things the way they were during Buhari? Not this one that you've carried it into this place where it's so bad. And so when uh, uh, Remy Tinubu will come at instead of going home to go and sit down and have a conversation with her husband that rigged her uh, election and got himself declared as president on what to do and how he has been such an abysmal failure, even to his supporters. You understand how he has disappointed a lot of people, how he has disillusioned a lot of people. That's the thing that Remy Tinubu should be focused on and getting to hard does she help uh, her husband to salvage anything that can be salvaged from this disaster that not only he had turned, uh, he, he, although, although he is, uh, he had turned Niger Nigeria uh, into. But it's so sit down and start gaslighting people and saying all sorts of things. Is there anybody who is going to a place to go and ask them for money? And I'm sure maybe probably they're used to these politicians who always come and grovel at their feet. And so that, th that mentality is how they look at other citizens and just talk anyhow and just do anyhow. But so the first thing that Remy Tinubu needs to understand, she should just should stay in her lane. Where they are spending hundreds of millions of naira uh, for her to travel all around the world and absolutely doing nothing, wasting real waste of money. The last time, the only thing that she got out of the travels that she said she was doing was to go and look for some national ashoebi. She should stay in her garden and focus on whatever it is that she's growing in that her garden and just take her mouth out of governance. Nobody's going to call her out as long as she maintains her lane. She's just an ordinary citizen like every other person. She does not occupy any office. Even the office of the first lady that they're giving to her that is jumping up and down on it's an illegitimate office. It's not in the constitution. And so whatever it is that she needs to do let her be doing it in her lane and her business and just stop all these things that she's coming out to be talking anyhow at this 
very sensitive time when Nigerians are really going through so much pain, so much hardship, where people can eat, people can do a lot of things. So, Remy Tinibu, just stay for your lane, madam. Madam, just stay for your lane. Do, do your thing for that, your lane. They oppress the people you feel you oppress for that, your lane. The ones where you feel they do them anyhow, they send them anyhow, they talk to them anyhow, they do one for that, your lane. No pass your lane at all because right now, as a day like this, so now this your lane, now you just now you just pass. So, then the other thing she said that. Uh, that her husband is not greedy. Let me tell you, let me tell you, your husband is the greediest of greed. In short, if they were going to put a pictorial evidence or pictorial representation of what greed is, it's your husband they will put there. This is someone that has such mental poverty mindset that uh, such a... Uh, poverty mindset that all he could think about is get uh force his way into office and not think about doing anything for the people but everything that he can grab everything grabable tinibu has been grabbing it from buying a car for himself buying uh a jet for himself buying a yacht for himself giving all sorts of contracts where there is no due process that is being followed to his cronies his friends the uh, companies that has his son as a uh, part of the management board and and all of that i mean if there's any definition of greedy that's that's what it is and you look at the number of monies that have been uh, inserted into budget i don't think we've had it so bad as bad as it is right now with what uh, tinibu has done instead of uh, setting uh, with the budgets that he has brought and the amount of monies that have been inserted into it and all of that so if you're talking about greedy uh, greedy uh, Tinibu is greedy. So uh, maybe probably Remy Tinibu needs to go and check it. once again the definition of what greedy is. Maybe she, she's mistaking it for another thing and, and that's it. On the cause of hardship of Nigeria, how dare she? How dare she come and talk that nonsense? How dare she say that her husband Tinibu, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, is not the uh, a cause of hardship in Nigeria today? Who is the one who, who has made policies without any any back into those policies who is the one who had put things in place who is the one who is who has not called down the cost of governance who is recklessly wasting the money of nigeria why people are going through so much suffering madam like i said earlier eh, maintain your lane so that let's focus on real issues let's not be focusing on inanities because right now when we sit down and talking about you it's actually focusing on inanities but it needs to be addressed because if you keep talking now nobody is telling you that madam go and face your lane you understand stay in your lane and be doing your little things toy things that you're doing uh there whatever it is that you're doing and the little competition and the gardening that you're doing you begin to actually believe that you're actually talking sense and begin to believe that there's something sensible about the way uh, the thing that you're doing. So sometimes it's very important for one to look at certain things that are not being said rather than actually address it. That's why I've decided to waste these eight minutes of my time that I should be using on another thing to address uh, uh, Madam Remy Tinibu. Just stay in your lane. Madam, Madam, respect yourself, eh? Stay in your lane.